So the Battlefield franchise is finally back in the news, but for all the wrong reasons. A little over 200,000 of them at the time that we're recording this. So, and no, that number, that's not the amount of remaining bugs in the game. Might not be very far off from that amount based on our play session with it, but that is the number of customers seeking a refund after purchasing this ambitious but severely flawed title that still, at the time we're recording this, lacks some basic features, kind of standards in games, like in-game voice chat with your squad mates. I mean, like, that's mm -hmm. been around since, you know, I think the GameCube. That's kind of gaming 101. You, you, would, you would think, <laughs> but you'd be wrong. <laughs> And the interesting thing, EA has not chosen to make a refund announcement the way that, you know, CD Projekt Red did when Cyberpunk 2077 came out and, you know, completely pooped the bed. But the prognosis on this one does not sound promising. You know, there's already a very competitive environment that's saturated with quality shooters. You know, Halo Infinite is doing really well. Call of Duty, very, very popular right now. Of course, you have Fortnite, Apex Legends, Overwatch. There's simply no room in the market for a game that remains essentially too broken to pop properly enjoy months after its release. Battlefield may have one of the most incredibly loyal fan bases on the planet, yeah, that, but the numbers just, this just don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> and according to the numbers from Steam, only an average of 4,000 players are still playing this title at any given time. You know, there's there's a very wise and ancient proverb that says, don't hate the player, hate, hate the, the game. game. Maybe, maybe you've heard that one before. Well, the good news is the people, they're not hating the players at all. Bad news is they're absolutely hating this game. They are hating. <laughs> the Battlefield franchise has always had a special place in my heart, tending to zig every time the bigger and overproduced Call of Duty series would zag. And as the perpetually beloved underdog in the eternal struggle for the FPS market, I truly hope the release of Battlefield 2042 would finally level the playing field for them in this new console generation and perhaps set them apart from their competition. Oh, they, they're definitely set apart from their yeah. peers, light years apart, in all, all the wrong, wrong ways. ways. <laughs> all the big dreams, the well-meaning promises EA that gave us when they were announcing the title sounded good. I'm sure they intended to fulfill all of them. I mean, nobody wants to release a broken game, and Who certainly would? nobody is benefiting from this massive disappointment. But as the esteemed and, well, fictional genius Ian Malcolm explained when he was highlighting the folly of building the first Jurassic Park, just because we believe we can do something doesn't mean we should. We can all learn a very valuable lesson from this Battlefield's troubled release that can help us understand some of the disappointments in our own lives. Just because something sounds like a great idea does not mean it is the right time to do it. And even when our heart is in the right place, it does not mean that this particular battlefield is our mission to complete. Now, many well-meaning followers of Christ, myself included, mm -hmm. have come face to face with our own broken battlefield experiences. We feel a burning desire to complete a mission for the Lord. We receive maybe some encouragement from our well-meaning family and friends that seems to confirm our direction. So we march out into battle with a head full of dreams, a heart full of joy, and then we're promptly met with crushing disappointment as chaos immediately erupts around us and our hopeful visions rapidly devolve into a struggle to simply survive. Yep. That's me. <laughs> in these painful moments, our passion is replaced with some very real and challenging questions. Like, why didn't this work out? All I wanted to do was serve the Lord, and I was rewarded with literally an embarrassing failure that now has me questioning more than just this mission. It makes you wonder, did I, maybe I misheard God. Maybe I misinterpreted everything. These are tough questions, and they call for some honest answers. If you have followed a calling in your heart and been dealt with a crippling setback that made you question more than simply your mission, then you are not alone. To be fair, the presence of conflict is not always an indication that we have pursued the wrong path. Sure. You know, sometimes the Apostle Paul went exactly where God told him to go, and things still went horribly, horribly wrong. wrong. Other times, horribly Paul wrong. tried to go places and was actively prevented by the Lord because it was the wrong place, or maybe the wrong time. We will all feel callings in our heart to serve the Lord at various times in our lives. But even if we're choosing the correct mission, it may not be the right time. Battlefield 2042 did not struggle because of its futuristic war setting. 
it simply wasn't ready to launch. There may also be times where our heart is in the right place, but it may not be a dream that we are meant to complete on our own. We may be responsible for preparing a foundation that others are meant to build on. I think we can all agree that the updated Frostbite engine that powers Battlefield 2042 has a lot of potential, but it is clearly a foundation designed to make better games in the future, or in the future. not in its present form. No, not the one that they make so far. No. As the body of Christ, we are all designed to work together. Some parts of the body do not serve their full purpose until the rest of the body has reached the correct time and maturity in their development to support that function. While it's true that the Bible says that when we delight ourselves in the Lord, he will give us the desires of our heart. We all like that verse. There's Sounds more great. to the passage. Yes. We must also commit our way to him for those dreams to come to pass. Perhaps our dreams had fizzled and shaken our confidence, making us question everything from our relationship with Christ to his benevolence towards us. I hope this encourages you that whatever battlefield setback that you're currently enduring, this troubled time is not the final part of our campaign. Now, perhaps the mission that is burning in our heart is the correct mission, but the point that we pursued it was simply not the right time. Maybe there are fellow dreamers who are critical components of that same mission but they are not yet at the maturity level to share this battlefield with us. I hope the battlefield bounces back and realizes that we all want and need this franchise to be successful for no other reason than to give some competition to Call of Duty. But they have to finish laying the foundation of their game engine before they attempt to release any other games using the same platform. And in our lives, don't lose heart when the Lord responds with a no or a not yet. His timing is perfect, and his way is the only way. It is only in the place where we fully submit our heart and all of its passions to him and his plan that we will see those God-given desires come to pass. In the exact way, at the perfect time, and with the support of everyone they are designed to be accomplished with.